Okay, um, this is going to be an extremely fascinating conversation for so many of us. We 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 always wonder: Is there life beyond the stars? Um, we see so much in the news, and we have been taught so much over the years of our lives. We almost don't know what to believe. But today's guest, uh, Dr. Stephen Greer, is an expert in the field of UFOlogy, if you will. Um, he's the founder of the Center for the Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence and the Global Disclosure Project, which seeks to disclose the alleged uh, classified UFO information. Please welcome medical doctor, Dr. Stephen Greer. What's up, buddy? Good to be with you. Great seeing you. I love being on your show. Absolutely. Dr. Greer, we got so much to cover. Uh, I, I've watched you over the years. I, I know your work. I have seen your films. I, I want to be enlightened today. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll do it. Let's go back to the beginning. Where, where, where were you born and raised? I was born in North Carolina. Uh, I actually did a Chapel Hill residency. I'm an emergency and uh, trauma doctor, medical doctor. Uh, as I grew up there, um, uh, from a very, very poor family, we lived in a two room shack with no heat, no air conditioning, uh, put myself through high school, college, med school, um, was very involved in a lot of avant garde issues. Even back then, believe it or not, I had an African American girlfriend in North Carolina 50 years ago. That was dangerous. <laughs> uh, I'm talking dangerous. But we, you know, it, it was great. Um, you know, we grew up in a very modest background, uh, but worked hard, got through med school, had three kids in med school, uh, but got involved with this. You know, my, uh, my mom's uh, oldest brother worked on the lunar module, that first machine that landed on the moon uh, in 1969. Um, and that was a Northrop Grumman. Back then it was just Grumman, and it became Northrop Grumman. And he had his whole career there. And um, so I had a very in keen interest in all of this. And when I was about eight years old, I actually saw one of these extraterrestrial vehicles, um, broad daylight. Uh, this would have been about 1963 in North Carolina. And I was with my twin sister and some boys in the neighborhood. Now, my parents said, oh, you didn't see that. Those don't exist. I said, yeah, they do. People need to believe their children when they see something, honestly. Um, so I, it ignited a lifelong interest and I talked to my uncle about it. He was very supported. He'd heard things being a big aerospace engineer guy, um, uh, working on the Apollo mission, landing on the moon. Right. So, uh, I began digging into it and studying it. And here we are, you know, 60 years later, uh, back in, uh, it went from 63 to 2023. <laughs> I've been digging into this, the deep dive. Okay, you know, before I get into your professional career, I'm, I, I just want to understand you as a person. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you're raised. Uh, are you in a religious family? Do you, does your family believe in a higher power? Well, no my my family were uh, more humanistic. They weren't religious at all, um, but they were open minded. You know about things. My dad was Navy World War II. Um, uh, neither of them, you know, had a religious viewpoint. Uh, but I had some experiences when I was 17. I got very sick and died. I had a near-death experience. And I learned that the conscious mind uh, is actually based in sort of an infinite field of awareness, this sort of this concept of the cosmic mind. So I had this phenomenal experience. And that introduced me to some ideas and concepts and experiences that led me to dig into this whole question of life in outer space and intelligent life elsewhere very deeply. Uh, and about six months after that near-death experience, uh, I had a major uh, encounter with an ET craft. And uh, that was up in the mountains of North Carolina in October 1973. So there's a long kind of history of that, but you know, my, my birth family, they didn't, if it didn't fit in a test tube, they didn't think it existed. I mean, they just were not at all religious. Would, would, would it be safe to say that they were atheists? Agnostic, more, just didn't know, didn't care. 
Uh, they grew up in hyper religious families and uh, but very fanatical and strict, and so they kind of rebelled against that. So my parents were like over it. Um, so that's that was their their orientation. Um, so I didn't. Ha- I was sort of a clean slate. I was open minded about things, but I didn't have any. Let's call it indoctrination that you get from organized religion, which I think was probably a good thing because uh, it gave me a more universal perspective in the long run. 